Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. The majority of dental review systems are structured on the basis of post-treatment review, when a difference of opinion between two of the principles involved arises. Most systems do not encompass an ongoing review mechanism of dental treatment delivered on a routine basis, nor does any system assure the policyholder that benefits are spent in the most appropriate manner. The Michigan Dental Association peer review mechanism attempts to answer these needs through the work of three committees. The Component Society Peer Review Committee, the MDA State Peer Review Committee, both complaint-oriented, and the MDA Professional Review Panel, a mechanism which evaluates the quality or appropriateness of dental care in patients randomly selected from third-party programs. A major new strength of this system is the use of clinical quality assessment criteria. The criteria ensure standardization in the work of the three-part mechanism. To discuss these criteria and the work of the Michigan Dental Association in peer review, we have with us Dr. John Nolan, Executive Director of the association. Dr. Olin, how were the clinical quality assessment criteria developed? Well, Chuck, the Michigan Dental Association Board of Trustees charged its Committee on Dental Practice with the development of the criteria for all types of dental service. Uh, that committee, uh, working with Dr. Gerald Charbonneau from the University of Michigan here, uh, since Dr. Charbonneau had worked closely with a group out in California on this uh, a similar subject, uh, developed the criteria and on operative dentistry, and then on the other phase of dentistry also, and uh, submitted those to the Board of Trustees along with other committees of the association uh, for their judgment, and uh, in the end then uh, put them out for validation. So I see. Are the criteria indeed validated? Well, yes, they are in the area of operative dentistry, not in the other areas at this time, although mm -hmm. that'll come along. Uh, the uh, criteria were validated by members of the committee on, on uh, dental practice and also on peer review. And they compared their findings on, the, on using the criteria mm -hmm. and uh, uh, they are validated at this time. I see. There, I understand there are four levels of criteria. Could you describe those for us? Yes, each service is graded with uh, uh, one of four terms. Uh, the terms are Romeo, Sierra, Tango, or Victor. The term Romeo uh, ca uh, is the uh, term that is used uh, to indicate that the service is in the range of excellence. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the term uh, Sierra uh, says that the service is in the area of acceptability. Now the other uh, terms that are used, Tango, uh, would indicate that something needs to be done with that service to prevent further damage. Uh, yes, and the last uh, one, Victor, indicates that there is something right there that is doing some damage to the patient and needs uh, doing needs redoing immediately. I see. Let's present a role-playing situation in which uh, two examiners using the established criteria are evaluating restorative work in a patient. Doctor, the first thing we're going to look at today is a DO amalgam on number 19. 19 DO. Surface and color. Surface and color, SRO. Anatomic form. Anatomic form, SMR. And margin integrity. Margin integrity is SCR. Okay, a DO amalgam on 230. 230, DO. Surface and color. Surface and color is SRO. Anatomic form.
An atomic form is SMR. And margin integrity? Margin integrity is TCR. Okay, tooth number eight, a DL composite. Tooth number eight, DL composite. Surface and color. Surface is R. Anatomic form? Anatomic form is R. And margin integrity. Margin integrity is R. Okay, thank you very much, Doctor. Doctor, we're going to look at a DO amalgam on number 19. Okay. Surface and color? SRO. Anatomic form? SUCO. And margin integrity? SCR. A DO amalgam on tooth number 30. All right. Surface and color? Mm, SRO. Anatomic form? SMR. And margin integrity. SCR. Tooth number eight, a DL composite. All right. Surface and color. Romeo. Anatomic form. Romeo. And margin integrity. Romeo. Okay, doctor, thank you. We've been discussing the clinical quality assessment criteria established by the Michigan Dental Association for peer review. And we have with us Dr. John Nolan, executive director of the Michigan Dental Association. In the role playing situation, which we just presented, the examiners disagreed on, on the rating, which is not an unlikely situation in real life. Um, how did they go about resolving this difference? Well, we ask that each of the examiners or the two examiners get together and compare the, um, the, those factors on which they made their judgment. Mm -hmm. And in most instances, of course, this, this can be uh, worked out together so that they will reach agreement. Mm -hmm. uh, in the event that they continue to disagree, uh, then the, the, the actual grade that is assessed to that service would be the lowest grade uh, between the two of them. I see. Well, let's go back to the role-playing situation then and observe how the two examiners did indeed resolve their difference. Uh, useful enough and, and practical enough for the office. Uh, hi, Stephanie. Hi. Excuse me, doctors. We seem to have a discrepancy on 230 under margin integrity. Dr. Willie, you said TCR, and Dr. Rickert, you said SCR. Okay. Hmm. Tooth number 30. I remember that. And there was some discrepancy around that buccal angle of the, of the amalgam there. Uh, but as I recall, as I ran the Explorer up and down that, uh, that crevice, it was solid. I, th I thought it was down below the dental enamel junction. Um, I also wondered about a small spot on the occlusal. Did you pick that one up? Yes. I, well, I felt it was a, a slight deviation in the pit there, but I didn't think it was detrimental to the restoration. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should go back and take a look at that. Uh, yes. All right.
marginal integrity of tooth number 30 is SCR. Okay. Well, Carl, what do you think? Well, I took a look at that again, and I, I think you're right. I, crack was pretty deep, but I don't think it's as deep as I originally thought it was. I don't think it goes quite to the dental enamel junction. Um, it's awfully close, but I still think it's the Sierra, and I agree with you. Yeah, I don't think it would be detrimental to the, the usefulness of the patient at all. No, I don't either. I think it'll, it'll work out. We've seen how a disagreement between examiners can be resolved. Dr. Nolan, what happens if an evaluation of poor performance is made? Well, Chuck, it would depend on, on where the uh, review originated. If it is a random sample review, mm -hmm. then this, uh, uh, the results of that review are reported to the uh, third party, or in other words, the insurance carrier or service corporation right. uh, that provided the payment for the service. Uh, they're expected then to get in touch with the dentist who provided the service and tell him about the results of the, uh, of the uh, uh, review and he is invited to uh, correct the problem, uh, whatever the problem is. Uh, he, uh, and in certainly most instances, he would do that. Mm -hmm. uh, if for any reason there continues to be a disagreement in regard to the service, uh, the dentist uh, and or the carrier can appeal to the Michigan Dental Association peer review committee that would review the service and see whether they agreed with the results of the review or whether they might have agreed with the dentist who claimed that the service was satisfactory. I see. And the review committee then would have the final yes. uh, say so on that. Yeah. What about uh, a complaint from a patient? Well, in the case of a complaint, the, the review on that service uh, would be carried on normally by a component uh, peer review committee. Uh, this committee would be uh, having this patient in to review the service and would make a judgment, of course, on the, on, on the uh, uh, grade of the service. And then that committee is expected to work with that dentist in, in uh, uh, having him correct the deficiency. Uh, and, and, of course, in most instances, the dentist would agree and would do that. I see. What protection, legally speaking, do reviewers have? Uh, well, the uh, state laws in Michigan do uh, provide that a reviewer in a peer review situation uh, is not uh, subject to uh, damages as a result of his decisions that are made uh, in good faith. Mm -hmm. uh, the only question about it would be whether the decision was made uh, in a, in, without good faith. And I would have to think that that, uh, uh, that would be very rare. Yes. Uh, on the other hand, the, also the Michigan Dental Association has insurance that covers these people that are working with the association or any of its component societies in this uh, peer review system. Uh, and also the dentist's individual insurance would uh, no doubt cover him in these circumstances also. So in the event of a suit, uh, the examiner uh, has several areas for legal protection then? Yes. yes. How are the examiners selected, Dr. Nolan? Well, initially, uh, the examiners uh, were selected by uh, asking for the component societies to submit names. Uh, the Board of Trustees and the several committees involved all were invited to submit the names of persons that they felt would fit uh, into the system. Uh, and then those, the, that list of names was submitted back to that same, uh, those same groups mm -hmm. uh, so that any of them could eliminate a name off in the list that they felt was not appropriate for any one of them number of reasons. So the list has been uh, reviewed by a number of people and, and we feel so it's a, it's a good one. Sure. And over time this list could change. People could drop off or come back on and so forth. Yes. Uh, from time to time of course somebody drops off in the list uh, for any one of a lot of reasons and we have to keep enough uh, people in each geographic area to make the uh, system function and also in, we have to make sure that there are enough specialists uh, in every uh, specialty area of dentistry. Is there um, a training process or an educational process the examiners have to go through? Well, uh, recently uh, 44 of these uh, persons on the list uh, came to the University of Michigan and took a two-day course in, in implementing this, uh, the criteria. Mm -hmm. uh, now we intend to, uh, with 
the eight of materials that uh, we have developed or will be developing as a result of a grant from the Kellogg Foundation. Uh, we'll be uh, training people out around the state, uh, the other people on the list, uh, and but uh, those will probably be done by the use of, of materials rather than uh, having them come into university form. The dental profession changes during the research, new methods, new techniques, and so forth, and I assume the criteria will change over a period of time, too. Is there a process for that? Yes. The, the Committee on Dental Practice will continue to review the criteria on a regular basis. Uh, of course, there are, as you indicated, uh, changes in practice and changes in standards mm -hmm. uh, that the committee will want to look at, and I'm sure there'll be uh, reason to review it. You mentioned earlier that Dr. Gerald Charbonneau had worked with a group in California, so there's at least one other peer review mechanism in the country. How does the Michigan peer review mechanism compare with others in the country? Well, I think most states have uh, what they call a peer review mechanism. Uh, most of them, however, are uh, their, peer, their idea of peer review is a response to complaints, and they do a good job of it. I think that we are the, uh, we here in Michigan are probably the only ones that are working on a random sampling basis, mm -hmm. where we have this uh, panel of dentists that will be reviewing services uh, without the, uh, any complaint initiating a review. And this is where we hope to, to uh, show that it, such a system is practical. Very good. We've only talked about restorative dentistry. Are there plans to establish criteria for the other phases of dentistry? Yes, uh, we have the criteria at this time, but we have not validated them. I see. So uh, that will go on. Uh, the, the field of complete prosthesis or full denture work will be the first one, and that will be done uh, this spring. Uh, but by the end of 1981, we expect to have a validation of all the criteria for all the phases of dentistry. By the end of 1981? By the end of 1981. I see. Thank you, Dr. Nolan, for the information you've given us. We've been discussing the use of the Clinical Quality Assessment Criteria developed by the Michigan Dental Association Committee on Dental Practice. The criteria are designed to ensure standardization in the work of the peer review mechanism. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu slash license.